Hello everyone, Marco Cipetta for Hot Hardware here with one of the hottest things in gaming, NVIDIA's brand new GeForce RTX 3080. What do you say we dive right in and take a look? As much as I want to tell you all this is the first time I've been in this box, it's just not true I ripped into this thing like a monkey on a cupcake when it came in. So let me pop off this top and there she is. That is the brand new GeForce RTX 3080. If you missed NVIDIA's presentation last week, the GeForce RTX 3080 you see here is essentially the replacement for the RTX 2080. Uh, this card has 8,704 CUDA cores, so lots more CUDA cores than the previous gen, with 10 gigabytes of leading edge GDDR6X memory. Now, NVIDIA is claiming 2X the performance over the previous gen. Unfortunately, we cannot show you performance numbers today but we can give you a tour of the card so that's what we're going to do next before we dive in and take a look at the card itself i should probably show you what else it comes with so underneath the 3080 inside nvidia's packaging is another little box and inside here is a basic lit pack and this adapter so these new cards have a new mini 12 pin power connector you can see it right there and the cards include an adapter that turn two eight pin PCI Express power connectors to this single 12 pin. So if you're considering one of these cars, you will not need a new power supply. You can use existing power supplies with the standard PCI Express power connectors. All right, there she is. That's the GeForce RTX 3080 in the flesh. As I mentioned earlier, this card has 8,704 CUDA cores, and those are arranged in six GPCs with 68 SMs. And out of the box, the RTX 3080 offers 30 teraflops of compute performance. So it also offers uh, 164 gigapixels per second of fill rate or 465 gigatexels per second. And the 10 gigs of GDDR6 offer 760 gigabytes per second of peak bandwidth. So much more memory bandwidth on these cards versus the previous gen. At first glance, the GeForce RTX 3080 looks nothing like previous gen cards. You'll notice the whole front is essentially a heatsink assembly. So underneath this fan at this end is a vapor chamber that's sitting on top of the GPU. There is a notched PCB under here. And this fan essentially blows air in through the heatsink fins where it's immediately exhausted from the system. But then the vapor chamber is linked to these heatsink fins and this rear heatsink via heat pipes. And you'll notice air can pass completely through this one. On the other side of the card is another fan that pulls air all the way through where it's hopefully exhausted from a system. And this rear heatsink aids the front heatsink assembly in keeping everything cool. If we compare the GeForce RTX 3080 to its predecessor using NVIDIA's data, it's basically cooler and quieter across the curve. So at any given noise level, NVIDIA is claiming this heatsink assembly keeps the GPU up to 20C cooler. Conversely, at any given temperature, NVIDIA is also claiming that it's 10 dBA quieter. So we're hoping to confirm this when we do some official testing and the embargo lifts. But for now, we have to go by what NVIDIA is saying, and it appears that this massive heatsink assembly is way more efficient than what's on previous gen cards. If we jump to the top of the card, you'll see some GeForce RTX branding right here. And nestled in this center heatsink in this little cutout is the 12 pin power connector. And up front here, not much happening. What is missing on the RTX 3080 is any sort of SLI connector or NV link. These cards work only in single GPU configurations. So no SLI for the RTX 3080. If we quickly jump to the back of the card, there's that fan and heatsink assembly we showed you earlier. There's this interesting X pattern and some additional branding here. So whether the card is sitting in your case uh, horizontally or vertically, you've got some branding that you can see. And moving to the bottom of the card, we have, you know, additional heatsink and just a... Uh, flat portions of the fan shrouds here. If we jump to the rear of the card, there's just a couple of screw holes here, but not much happening. And if we flip it around this way, here's the outputs and the venting for the cooler. So you have three uh, DisplayPort connectors and an HDMI 2.1 connector and a much larger vent than was on previous gen cards. So as we mentioned earlier, this front fan sucks air in and immediately exhausts it from a system through this vent. So compared to an RTX 2080 Super, the new RTX 3080 is a little bit bigger. You'll notice here it's just a little bit longer. But if I stand the cards up, you'll notice one other difference. So they're technically both dual slot cards. 
The RTX 3080 is ever so slightly deeper along the top end here, but ultimately they both consume only two slots. It's the big monster RTX Titan replacement, the RTX 3090, that's the giant three slot beast. I think we're gonna end things there for today. Um, unfortunately, we can only show you the card itself, any performance data or other information. We have to keep quiet for just a little bit longer. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and tick that reminder bell. You'd really be doing us a big favor. Once again, this is Marco Cipetta for Hot Hardware. Stop by the site soon for more scoop on the RTX 3080. And thanks for stopping by.